Well, ladies and gentlemen, the month of September is here, and it's not off to the greatest start, but it's quite stereotypical for the month of September. As you can see over here in September, it is actually typically the worst performing month out of the year, where 47% of the time it finishes greater than 0%. And that's based off of the last 32 years of the S&P 500. Today's Stock Market Brief Show, where we navigate these financial markets through the lens of technical and intramarket analysis, I'm going to talk about the changing market conditions, some things that have been taking place, and then also how to approach the moves that we just saw, which were insane. Let's get into today's show. Welcome back to the show, everybody. Let's take a look here how the markets did. And as we all are well aware, the markets didn't do all too hot today. We had small caps down almost 3%. We had the NASDAQ 100 down 3% plus and the NASDAQ composite down there. Even the S&P 500 was down over 2%. What led the way to the downside? Well, you can take a look down here. That's energy and technology. Technology was down a whopping 4.59%. That's a big move there in tech. And what led the way? Well, the ones that have been leading the way for the last three months plus. Consumer staples, retail, re real estate, and utilities, and even healthcare was up there. Very defensive type posturing. So what was the big laggard in technology? Well, a lot of the names were down pretty big, but NVIDIA, one of the higher market cap names, as you can see because of its big square there, but also one of the higher implied vol volatility names, names that have a higher implied vol. And what I find interesting is it was down you know, 10% on the trading session or so. And then after the bell came, NVIDIA has been issued a subpoena by the Department of Justice. And it's hard to believe that, well, all this price action, somebody didn't know or somebody knew something that was potentially going to happen. So it's down another 2% so far in the aftermarket session. We'll see how that opens up tomorrow. Crude oil, right? Energy was the second sector down on the day, 2.49%. That should be coming off the back of crude oil. The last two trading sessions in crude oil were pretty much down and closed towards the lows of the days. And today, that's down a pretty substantial, substantial move, taking out some of these prior higher lows. So now this compression pattern is starting to break down. Now, this was a pretty strong move, so it's typical to get some sort of a bounce back. But it is something to just note that we're starting to create lower lows here, which could potentially indicate, uh, well, some scares there in the economy, especially strong moves like this that we're seeing. And this really did help out the bond market. As we know, uh, on Friday, I believe it was, the uh, oil was down pretty substantially, but the 10-year yield was up on the day pretty substantially and that right there is a little bit of a divergence because oil typically leaves the 10-year yield right it peaked over here then the 10-year yield followed it peaked over here right and then shortly thereafter it followed down further there and now what we're seeing was 10-year yield rise and then oil come off so and now the 10-year yield actually followed suit and fell down and what that helped out was obviously bonds and bonds were a one of the better performing assets today and kind of like a flight to safety overall. If you take a look at the uh, SPY on the daily time frame, this is a pretty large candle over here. We're going to talk about where it could potentially fall to and levels to watch for if it starts bouncing back up. Overall, it was down 2.18% on the day. And well, let's be honest, if you've been watching this show, we've been talking about some signals that have been appearing and how there could be potentially a big shakeout of 2024. In fact, we talked about the signals right over here. And this had to do with the zones that we track in the Discord server, and I shared them here. And the market did, well, what it did on the prior times that we talked about this signal. It went up a little bit, and it went kind of sideways and came in. That, or sometimes it pulls down harder. The great shakeout of 2024 was where we talked about some key levels and to be aware of all the warning signs that were kind of building up as well. Now, why was today such a rare day? If you take a look here, this is the weekly expected move for the SPY. We're looking at the 15-minute time frame. Okay, we closed here. Sorry, closed here on the prior week. We started with a gap down, and this gap down started underneath the daily expected move, which already is not a good sign. And as you can see, when we opened up in there and we uh, started moving down further, we tagged in the first, first trading session of the week down towards the lower weekly expected move. That means... On the daily uh, on the daily expected move, you can see that we passed surpassed the two sigma, surpassed the three sigma, and yes, we even came down to a four standard deviation move, which is something 
that I haven't seen for quite some time. Now, you might be saying, well, it was only down 2%. Well, the market's implied move was a lot smaller than minus 2%. In fact, you can see that this was four standard deviations here. And if you're thinking of this in terms of a distribution curve, I'll show you, right? 68% of the time, we close within one standard deviation. 95.44% of the time, we close within two standard. That means we've been above this two standard deviation move. And then 99.72% of the time, we'll close above a three standard deviation move. And you can see we closed outside of that. So it's a very rare occurrence to close under these type of levels. Now we'll get back to this and we'll talk about the weekly expected move, the new daily expected moves and levels to watch. Uh, but another you know, kind of good view of this is if we look at the NQ and I'm just using regular trading hours, but here what you're seeing is you're seeing um, the two Sigma moves in pink, right? The standard uh, daily expected moves in black. And then anytime it's blue, we close the day outside of the daily expected move. So what you'll see here is if we look, I'm looking at one, two, oops, sorry, uh, 10 days, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 days. And if it wasn't for today, right? If we close within it, you could see one close out of it, two close out of it, three close out of it. So we'll count today, right? So four. So this means uh, if we're thinking of in terms of the distribution curve, right? We're actually now at 60%, right? We close within the one standard deviation move. So we'll see as this progresses throughout time, right? You know, if you if you flip a coin, you know, a hundred times, there's going to be times where you go tails, 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 tails. But over the course of many, many tries, it's going to eventually even itself back out more towards the 50-50 marker. And that's why it's important to look at statistics and probabilities when you trade. Now, a lot of people had asked uh, me, you know, or, you know, experience. When you look at daily expected moves, one of the things is, well, see, it doesn't work, right? Oh, these expected moves, they don't work. I want to be very clear here. Daily expected moves, weekly expected moves, these do work. It's a mathematical equation. The strategy that you choose to deploy is what works or doesn't work in that time. And, you know, if you played the daily expected move today, obviously, you know, that was, we, cl we opened basically closed around there or opened around there and pushed down further. So, Right out of the gate, you should be waiting for how price action does. Uh, and, and, and a couple of things there. Okay, I'm going to tell you what to watch for and what to look for moving forward. But if you gap down, that's already pretty bearish. And then two, if you're below a declining five-day moving average, that is in itself bearish too as well. That means the shorter term trends down. So already out of the gate, you're going to want to wait to see how price action responds. So maybe you waited 15 minutes. Okay, then what you have to do is consider what the market net flow is doing. And market net flow, if you trade intraday, this is probably one of the most important tools because it tells you whether you're on the right side or the wrong side of what the market is doing. All right, you want to trade with the market, not against the market. And right here, you're looking at a couple of lines. The white line is just the price of the S&P 500. The others are the cumulative net premiums for puts and cumulative net premiums for calls. And what you'll notice here is the red line was increasing, the green line was decreasing, and it was below the zero line. So this is diverging. That right there in itself is bearish. And the SPY was moving with that bearish divergence, which gives us this convergence. And as the SPY was moving down into these two sigma moves, as we were looking at NQ pulling into these two standard deviation moves, what happened there shortly thereafter? It started to turn gray. And that means that price started to kind of go sideways. It wasn't until it turned red where we started to see more sell side activity. And that means that the SPY is moving with those pre uh, QNF premiums. Now, if you were to play the two standard deviation move, there is something very important going on here. One, if you were to play that, you got to look and say, oh, well, actually it's still red. Maybe you waited for it to turn gray. And if that's the case, you can have a counter trend move. And that's kind of what we did see. We saw a little bit of a counter trend move in the price action. However, what do you notice the cumulative net premiums for calls doing? It's not increasing here at all by any means. And that's an important fact that would have said, okay, you know what? Maybe it's not the best time to do a counter trend bounce at these lower levels and let the market kind of digest. Now, if you do approach and you want to fight against the flow of the market, one thing that you should consider right out of the gate is your position size should be cut dramatically because you are fighting the tape, plain and simple. Uh, we'll get back to what we're specifically going to be looking for coming into tomorrow's trading session, but let's hop in 
here. Now, I thought this was a really cool looking uh, indicator. Uh, Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends had posted uh, this um, chart up. Um, basically, you know, it's, it's what we use. We use the five-day moving average and we look at the direction of the five-day moving average. Uh, that's nothing new there. But what he did was put create a visual and um, I just I just went ahead and coded it myself uh, just so I can have it because now I think it's going to be helped to just really quickly visualize is the trends bearish or are they bullish? And, you know, right here is the SPY, right? The, if it's red, if the price is red, it means it's below the five-day moving average and the five-day moving average is declining, okay? And you'll see the SPY is red, the Qs is red, IWM, it's currently red, semiconductors is red, XBI, which is biotech, and then also the Dow Jones Industrials. They're all red, meaning the five-day moving average is starting to calculate down and price action is below it. When these trends change, you'll typically see yellow. And yellow, yellow, I have it coded as a um, kind of a uh, divergence from price, right? The five-day moving average, for example, when price got into this yellow area, the five-day moving average was still calculating up at that time, which means, right, if you're below it, it could be bearish, but it could be bearish with caution because you can still snap back. It's not until we turn red where we start to see things start to shift. Okay, so yeah, as it stands right now, is a pretty significant sell-off, right? We can see bounces from these levels. That's more than normal, uh, but the short-term trend is changing, and we got to be aware of that. In a prior video, we talked about the VIX and you know the various signals that indicate that volatility could rise. Well, guess what? We got that signal today, and you can see volatility had risen. Now, I know some people are going to say, oh, well, you just drew that now because volatility rose. Um, well, actually, not quite. I'm going to show you specifically when we were triggered. Now, when you're below the gamma flip line and you close below that or get below it, that's when we start to look um, and and uh, start to put these boxes. So each time that you see these boxes is when we're in negative gamma territory. And then when it, the box ends, that's when we got into positive gamma territory. Now, if I pull up this specific chart, um, you can see that we've been in, we, we got, we crossed through negative gamma territory, but if I zoom in and point specifically when we crossed through negative gamma territory, it happened to be right at about 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. What was the VIX doing at that time? Well, the VIX was elevated, but more specifically at about 10 a.m., we started doodling around and boom, we shot off like a rocket ship as we went deeper into that negative gamma territory. Okay. So when you're in negative gamma territory, what does this actually mean? It means two things. It means you can see more selling into selling. That's what we saw. And also more buying into buying. So you can see various aggressive moves to the upside and downside. And that in itself means volatility increases, which we just pointed out there on the VIX. Now, that's all, you know, awesome and stuff. But now it's more about identifying some key levels that the market might trade down to so we can be aware of, right? And even if they don't trade down to these key levels, we can still pay attention to when we start to get into, you know, a bullish trend on these assets. And then also when we get back into positive gamma territory. So if the market continues to trade down, there are some levels that I want to discuss. This is the S&P 500, the SPY on the daily time frame. As you can see, this gray box, this is a gap. It means price started here and we gapped up. I went ahead and anchored a volume weighted average price to this. I've been doing this and we've been sharing it that when we cross down or close below, it may open the door to come to the lower anchor volume weighted average price from the prior swing low. And that would also line up with a potential gap fill. And gap fills have been known to act as potential support and resistance. So my thought here is if the SPY wants to trade down to and around this area, that's the level that I'd be watching is this gap fill and the swing low anchored volume weighted average price. It is interesting that today broke this anchored volume weighted average price. We saw less volume than the prior trading day though. So, you know, some might count this as a distribution day, but if you look to the left, it's technically less volume. So in my opinion, that's not technically a distribution day. If we look at the Qs, the Qs on the daily time frame, if you anchor the volume weighted average price to the swing low, we're actually tagging into that at this current moment. And then if we go down further, right? So this is now I kind of want to see how price responds in and around these areas because I'm going to show you here momentarily that the Qs are also out of their weekly expected move. But if we manage to see more sell side activity, I'd be looking for this potential gap fill from right over here to here. And if I even swing back to the left, 
this is somewhat, you, some might be able to call this an island reversal pattern, right? Where we gap down and created this, you know, range of price action and left this gap above us. So if price does come down here, I want to see how, you know, it responds and, you know, if it starts to recoup from those levels. All right. If we look at the IWM, the IWM saw a pretty strong move to the downside today. If we anchor volume weight average price, it's right down here to it around but 211, 212, kind of in this area. And then below that, we do have this gap as well. Now in the SPY, there are more gaps beneath us, but I'm just focusing in right now where kind of cl where's closest because I'm interested to see if how price responds in this area if it actually gets to it. It doesn't mean I'm going to just buy straight into this, but if the five-day moving average right continues to come down, right? I'm going to pull that up. Where is my chart? If the five-day moving average, um, I'll just I'll use this. I'll just use this example. But if it continues to pull down and we drop down into these further levels. I'm going to be looking for the five-day moving average to start to flatten out and then prices start getting back above for those conditions to potentially change. Now, what I find interesting here is today was just day one of the week, right? Or, you know, it's Tuesday, but, you know, it's our Traders Monday. Um, so we have three more trading days left and they bring on a lot of data. We got jolts, we got ISM services PMI on Thursday, and then we get non-farm payrolls and unemployment rate also on Friday. And this type of stuff brings in a lot of uh, a lot of volatility into the markets. And I find it interesting because we are actually already outside of the expected moves. Now, if you want to screenshot this and put these levels on your screen, I send this every week to my Discord community. I charge nine bucks a month. And on Twitter, by the way, I posted my entire tight list if you want to go take a look at what that actually looks like. There's all types of benefit there for nine bucks a month. Um, or you join and you or you can join and pay 90 bucks um, US dollars and get an entire year. Uh, the reason I'm showing you this one because I added this extra column and it's, I just call it outside question mark. And if it's yellow, it means it's in the weekly moves. It means it's between the upper and lower levels, right? But if it's red, okay, which it, it, there's a lot of red ones, it means it's already outside of its weekly expected move. So the SPY is outside of it, right? SPY and SPX, the Qs, the IWM, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, ARC Fund, right? And then if you look at some of these larger market gap names, you got Apple is outside the lower one. Google is outside the lower. NVIDIA is outside the lower. AMD, right? And uh, Netflix as well. They're all outside of these expected moves. And if we think of this in terms of distribution curve, remember, 68% of the time, it closes back within these levels. Now, with that said, we still have a lot of data coming. And I find this to be very interesting. If you look at the SPX expected move, this was going into this trading week. It was 70 six dollars that was plus or minus after today the weekly expected move currently for the remainder of the week is 89 dollars and 79 cents so guess what people volatility is here you can expect to see some pretty large moves and potentially in either direction so how do we approach if we want to quote unquote buy this dip or just step aside this is how I plan on doing it. So first and foremost, I'm going to map the daily expected moves on the SPY. We're already below the declining five-day moving average. So I know immediately that if I'm looking for a bullish setup, my position size is going to be smaller than usual. Now, the lower daily expected move today is five or going into tomorrow is 547 and 84 cents. The upper daily expected move is basically right back to the weekly expected move. So 556.32. And it, remember, like I said, it's very common to come back in and test these upper weekly expected moves, okay? But if you do start breaking off of it, you know, watch out because the lower monthly expected move, right? And this is the start of the month. We're not too far off of it. And that's at 544.55. Okay, so you can look at the RSI and you can say, oh, it's oversold. Uh, another thing that I like to do is obviously use market net flow. Now, if the market goes down further, I will not be trying to go long if the market net flow looks like this. Why? Because today was the perfect example. If you kept on trying to buy the dip, this told you not to the entire time. Now, if market net flow looks like this, where the green line is above the red line, the red line is flat, it's below zero, or even if it's up here, and we're not seeing this big red convergence going on, maybe we see gray or maybe we see green, that is where I'll be looking to execute into longs to potentially try to play it up further from an overextended to the downside bounce. But if I do not get that, 
I'm not going to bother. I'm going to wait for the five-day moving average to eventually flatten out, to turn back up, and for us to go back into positive gamma territory. That's all I got for you on today's episode, everybody. Hope it gave you some good insights into the market and how I look to approach it moving forward. See you later.